Hello and welcome to this Let's Play with Digital Foundry's 2007 Time Machine. Going back in time to 2007 essentially to play games from that era. And to talk about this very special game from that era, I'm joined by my colleague John Linneman. How are you doing there, John? I am doing wonderful, Alex. I am ready to look at some gears. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen it running on a PC from this era for quite some time, so uh, yeah. Yeah, this one's interesting. A lot of people have trouble even making this work uh, as it plays this intro video on modern PCs, let alone under Windows 10. Uh, but the thing is that makes it work is you need to have the original account that you actually registered the game to with Games for Windows Live. In my case, I still have that account and it still works. Uh, and so it's still registered. So yeah. It's, Otherwise it basically doesn't work. It's the ghost of yeah. Games for Windows Live. <laughs> it lives. Yeah, I know, right? It's uh, unfortunately it does. So let's start a new campaign and play casual. Maybe I should set the stage here then first. Yeah. Uh, so Gears of War was a huge release for Xbox 360. Came out in November 6th or so, 2006. One of the first games to really showcase what you could do on the hardware. Mm -hmm. uh, it was also the first big marquee Unreal Engine 3 release as well, yeah. which you know became a very important engine that generation. Uh, oh on gosh. Xbox 360 yeah. though, it's 1280 by 720. It uses 2x MSAA, but because it does it earlier, it's basically before all the post-processing, it's not actually that effective. Mm -hmm. So you wind yeah. up with sort of plenty of aliasing. But honestly, it looked amazing for the time. The main issue is that it did have a uh, rather inconsistent performance that would be solved in later games in the series. Uh, so it definitely ran the worst on 360. <laughs> yeah. And uh, then the release on PC came about kind of on E-Day the next year in 2007. And as we're seeing here on an 8800 GT, Q6600, 8GB of DDR2 at 800 megahertz, all on a 7200 RPM HDD, we're getting some pretty sweet performance here. Um, this is the highest in-game settings possible with... Um, uh, apparently it's trying to run VSync. I'm not sure if it's actually working right now. It doesn't look like it. Um, uh, at 1600 by 900 under DX10 because this game offered a DX10 mode which allowed you to use MSAA much like the Xbox 360 version. That's right. And it's running pretty okay. There was a there's some slight oddness though with the the, the frame time uh, occasionally. It looks like it's dipping a little bit. I think we're seeing that uh, common Unreal Engine stutter that we saw in a lot of PC games there. That that was uh, quite an issue actually early on in the lifetime of Unreal Engine 3. A lot of PC games especially exhibited this in ways that wasn't really common on the console side. Uh, like the 360 version had slowed down in other areas. It was more like GPU uh, issues typically, but it didn't really have stuttering per se. But on the PC, you could be running at a super high frame rate, but as you move between areas, since it used streaming uh, to allow these large levels, you would get lots of stuttering. And that's something that kind of persisted for a while uh, with UE3 games. Yeah, totally. And in this case right here, um, kind of just some one of the things that I'm noticing right now uh, is just how generously cinematic this opening is. It's actually pretty well done, I think. It's introducing you to game mechanics, while also showing the fact that this is kind of different than Unreal uh, tournament games before this or Unreal games before this where there's like a more cinematic approach to how the story is told. Like you're constantly being able to move the camera around and do this cinematic chase cam and like you get this pre-baked destruction happening here. Yeah, which which I remember absolutely destroying the performance on the 360 when it happens. Um, but it held up right there pretty all right. Um, I don't think um, V-Sync's working properly even though it is selecting the options right here. Uh, for reasons I cannot possibly imagine. Uh, but it's like showing that standard Unreal Engine of that time default smooth 63 FPS frame rate cap. Oh, and oh, I missed yeah. my active reload. Uh, also, and obviously we're playing casual. Just so looking at the easy. visuals again, one of the things that was really weird and common in early Unreal Engine 3 games was sort of, you could almost sort of pick a pseudo color grading mode. Like they would have like soft, cinematic, you know, stuff like that. And that was even on the 360 version. Yeah, it's, and it's here I think as well. It's too, obviously here on the PC. <clears throat> Question is where? At least. Is it accessible during yeah. gameplay? Uh, actually, it may not be. Uh, is there a video it doesn't seem to be on There is not. Wow. Not during gameplay. So I think I have to quit to menu to actually adjust the game options, which is... Woo, See, uh, that, that's not great. It's that is no the crisis. worst thing for covering <laughs> PC games right there. Actually, yeah. there's two things. One, accessing the menu in gameplay. If you can't do it, that's bad. Two, if you have to restart the game when you change certain settings. That is always frustrating. 
Yeah, I know. And in the case of this game, because of the post-processing, which was slightly desaturated, and it has like that distance fog that mixes with yeah. the distance depth of field setting, it looked extremely Unreal Engine. But this is the first game to really use the engine in a way that's like hyper impressive. So it looked pretty great, uh, honestly, for that time. No, There's I mean, really it's not just pretty great. It. This was absolutely a cutting edge. When it hit in 2006, there was nothing that looked this good. <laughs> yeah. And PCs of 2006 probably weren't as well suited to play this either. Yeah, uh, It no. did take the 8800 class, you know, that, that class of NVIDIA card to really be able to push this game smoothly. Mm-hmm. I mean, you, you otherwise you'd be probably be playing at more 1280 by 720 like settings, with, yeah, exactly. or similar settings to this, exactly. which is what you would expect actually if you're like playing with a um, at that point in time like X 1800 or so, something like that, yeah. And then and then all, or also the 7800 series, yeah, or you know 7000 series. I wonder how a 6800 uh, GTX uh, I, or I Ultra know, would I know run exactly that. Exactly how it runs it, and I've tested it. it does oh not, yeah, how it does, does it not run? work well? <laughs> uh, uh, okay, to be fair though, that was on a Pentium 4 3.6 gigahertz with hyper threading. So it's check this out. Whoa, well, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, it's body awesome. physics. But yeah, even <laughs> on a on a essentially a single core machine, which that is obviously a huge limiting factor as well, but uh the GPU was thrashed. The 6800 yeah. series just does not handle Unreal Engine 3 well at all. Yeah, it's like it has the shader model to do with the shader model 3.0 or 9.0 yeah, C. Yeah. This is where Dom, Dom just decides to take a break and lies on the ground and I have to pick him up. Uh, <laughs> um, but for that, it, it had like the ability to run this game's HDR pipeline, which is more like, I think like MDR. It's yeah. like, a, 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 like a middle range between low dynamic range and uh, uh, high dynamic range, which I think was honestly chosen uh, for the sake of keeping in for, like as part of Unreal Engine 3's focus on uh, consoles was part of keeping in the ED RAM of the Xbox 360, where a full HDR, like of a higher bit value, uh, would probably oh my gosh, the frame rate dipped there pretty intensely, uh, GPU wise. Yeah, exactly. exactly. GPU uh, utilization 1600 by 900. Uh, it's really high. I'm I'm getting really great G, uh, CPU utilization though uh, across the board. Like, it's obviously Windows is probably doing a bit of scheduling here, but it's much less single-threaded uh, looking in the gameplay here than say Crisis is. And I think it's important to keep in mind then that the PC you're using is very high end for that day, right? Oh yeah, this so is uh, cream of the crop essentially. The yeah. fact that you're still you know you're max pretty much maxing out the game, but you're still at 1600 by 900. And the yes. performance is not locked. It's not perfect. And you can see the GPU utilization is quite high uh, most of the time, right? So. Oh, yeah. It's like, especially in these scenes. I'm curious how the next level will run. I've only really run through this part of the game right now uh, beforehand, and it's a little bit stuttery. The point, or but the, po the point perfect. here is that, you know, again, we've talked about this before, but people have this idea that, you know, you should be able to get any new PC game, and if you have the right hardware, you can just max it out, and it will be flawless. <laughs> no, Jesus. And it was not like that. It really was not. And this is even a console port, which you would expect to to do that but no back then like even with console ports you were not just going to be loading this up on high-end pcs and getting perfect performance uh, that's just not how it was wow that really hurt the performance here not getting full gpu utilization and we're dipping below um it's that pre-calc destruction maybe and all the animation <laughs> yeah. work I would imagine that's that's what I'd imagine it is that's probably less than multi-threaded so, man going through that sequence i really like that introduction uh, uh, the old games for Windows trophy, but the introduction is <laughs> great because it's quick. Because there is some exposition, you get to you get an idea of what's happening, but they get you into the gameplay really quickly, and there's not a lot of downtime. This right here is actually probably the most downtime uh, in the game. Yep. This little helicopter bit. After this, like you're just there's tons of gameplay and very little exposition. You're just constantly going through. Uh, I mean, what Gears did is. Half-Life styled, where you're most of the actual dialogue and uh, gameplay storytelling beyond the ge game's combat was told in a way where you're kind of like walking and like radio talking or talking with people around you. Um, obviously, you can critique that because the Half-Life model is something some people don't like, but I think it's a good way, other than cutscenes, to keep you in the story. And, yeah, uh, and you know, just coming off of the the two, first two Metro games uh, and yeah. also Call of Duty games. Yes, uh, this is much less. Uh, intense in that like because call of duty 4 had not been released yet obviously other call of duties had done the cinematic first person shooter stuff 
uh, but it would get insane. There would be so much scripted stuff happening in Call of Duty, and that influenced the industry in a big way uh, for years, actually. And I think that's directly what caused you know games like Metro to go in that direction initially, was like, oh, we need to have lots and lots of scripted actions. Gears has that, but it's so much less overall. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, this cutscene here is probably the, the single longest cutscene in the game, pretty much, or one of them anyway. They're not that common. It's interesting here, too. You see, like, obviously Crisis came out uh, after the initial Xbox 360 release here. This is what kind of character models in games, this, this was yeah. their height uh, up until then. These models are particularly excellent looking. Obviously, now, if you compare it to something like Gears of War 2 or 3, which really even improved above this, um, I will also, you know, these are really great looking character models. The only problem is, is like, they, they kind of obviously Unreal Engine 3 sheen to them yeah. a bit. So, yeah. Crisis was obviously the benchmark, mm -hmm. but uh, I also thought Uncharted, which came out before or right around the time of the PC version of Gears, had really oh, nice good character point. models yeah. as well. Uh, yeah, different animation style, though. That very, like, yeah, say. they went for yeah. more that hyper-realistic kind of, like, uh, pulpy look. Yeah, it yeah. Did, it did have that. a different look, especially the first game. Uh, but, yeah, wow. Here we're getting that dialogue about like something. Uh, we need the light mass bomb to get the resonator. You know what we need? We can skip this. There's so much. Jo <laughs> I love the jargon there. So uh, okay, hold on. We're hold gonna on. have to. We're gonna have a. Oh, yeah, we're gonna for, have a conversation first, about this. First, you need to take care of these guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh wait, the, that's right. The, the king does that. But we need to look at this ground. Yep. You knew exactly what I was talking about. After all these years, I am not certain if because like okay, so there's scattered geometry here. Yep. Debris. And debris uh, but there's also a kind of deformed look to the ground which is really either dense polygons or as I think it honestly is I think this is Unreal Engine Palm um, but I'm not certain we would have to go to an edge like over here and see how it and that's see, that's the issue though is you can't like and it makes it's it really flatter. hard to see it does make it look flat there when it hits the edge which Palm would do but it's Part of the part of the problem is that just due to the camera placement in this game, you can't really. It's really difficult to get the camera down. Maybe if you go up the stairs, is the surface at the top of the steps? Uh, this wall just looks like a normal map. Yeah, see, they they really like the camera works actually quite good in this game. They really do a great job of keeping it from geometry. You see that? Yeah. It's so it's smart. not like it doesn't yeah like also through, like yeah like, like that right there. That's yeah that's that, awesome. You know, they they do everything <laughs> they can to prevent it from looking glitchy. Okay, so Gosh, that still looks great. Yeah, that, that looks really good. I mean, I, I think the way like the way it's intersecting with this makes me think because otherwise I would think that the geometry would oh, yeah. overlay onto it. If it was if it was geo, you would actually see uh, an undulation at the edge there. I think. So, so this is interesting because uh, you know Unreal Engine three obviously debuted in two thousand four, I believe, with an amazing tech demo. Um, that I still think looks absolutely amazing to this day. It's really good looking. Um, yeah. But then they kind of, to get it running on Xbox 360 at that time, uh, which in development had less RAM than it initially came out with. Uh, I mean, it had 256 during development. Epic and a couple other studios petitioned Microsoft to make sure it would have 512 unified, uh, which was a big deal. Yeah. Um, but they, they had to cut a bit out of like some of the engines. So they it focused a bit more on real time lighting than this game does. Uh, in the initial debut, and also had like a bunch of palm everywhere and a bunch of really cool little smaller things, but I think that's actually palm that we're seeing on the ground here. So that's cool. This is like one of the early games for Unreal, Unreal Engine 3 that used palm, uh, but not not all too common for Unreal Engine 3 titles actually. Yeah, that original Unreal Engine 3 demo it was pretty ambitious, and I remember a lot of uh, camera pans around different things. They showed some of the creatures. They showed the the enemy coming up out of the sewer grate and this is before the gears demonstration i think where they actually showing uh gears being played at a very low frame rate but before that there was actually that original original unreal engine 3 demonstration which had assets yeah yeah, the, the 2004 one. Yeah, yeah that had assets that would be used in gears uh yeah and, and at that time we had no idea of course um one thing that I actually really love about Gears Beyond, uh, just kind of the, like, I, I love that. <laughs> the the ragdolls, like, oh, yeah. that's a lot of fun. Um, but is uh, considering, like, the gore in this game, which was actually very intense for the time period. There weren't a lot of, you know, games with this level of fidelity where you could kind of see enemies dis 
disappear under your chainsaw bayonet um, is the use of uh, 3D blood. You oh, know, yeah. uh, a lot of a lot of games just use sprites for their blood, but for some reason in Gears, and I don't know if it's due to the generational jump, they they could afford to make the blood actually geometric. So when you shoot guys, yeah. and if I pause the screen right here, you can see that it's like actually a piece of geometry flying off. And it made the game just look that much more next gen. I think it just uh, had. I think that other. was just born out of the desire to make, you know, with the whole chainsaw gun and getting close to enemies, and they really wanted to have like a next gen thing. I think. Oh yeah, and they they achieved that. Um, yeah, really, it does look good. Yeah. So this, what's interesting is that later on they would add a lot more destructive elements. You know, like you could chip off. They would have like a layer of geometry that you could essentially chip off. I think I think that showed up in Gears two or three. I don't actually remember, but yeah, I think it's actually in Gears two. They made a big yeah. point of it. They also had the meat cube. Oh wow, the frame rate tanked when a grenade. But went yeah, in this in meat. this game, they didn't yet implement that. But they still had a lot of the decal systems pretty good for the time. Like you see all the little mm -hmm. the little bullet chinks in the wall there. Uh, so it really does give a sense of you know there being some destruction. Uh, we already saw earlier the sort of the scripted destruction. Which was relatively new for the time, actually. Uh, that sort of that concept of sort of like pre-baking, uh, pre-calculating the destruction and like playing it back, essentially. Yeah, yeah. Most of the things were like just like animations, yeah. uh, handmade in editor. Usually, like you think about like the source uh, days and stuff like that. Uh, a lot of that kind of thing. Which is great for for things that aren't really interactive, but they happen within the game environment. So, oh, so what are you looking at here then? Oh, these detail textures on top of the uh, yeah on top of the stone right here that actually look really excellent. Obviously, you know that's like Unreal uh, Engine tradition. When uh, yeah, you... I mean that goes back to Unreal One. <laughs> yeah, and it's and it's like everywhere in this game, and I don't think it's excessive looking because like more often than not at the normal camera distance right here, it just looks like you know like nice normal. It, it, detail. Yeah, it gives it sort of a grit. It's mm -hmm. only when you look closely yeah. do you see the underlying texture more clearly like yeah when you do that it really <laughs> i think it looks better with the detail texture but you can definitely see the original lower resolution asset under there now one thing that we're talking about like lower resolution assets if i recall i think the pc version may be different but the original xbox 360 version uh, of gears before this one um the lancer model was like one of the few models before they shipped it that they never ended up updating uh, so it is surprisingly lower, like, fidelity than, like, the rest of Marcus's model or something like that, if I recall. Like, here it, it looks okay, but I'll have to go back and check. But I remember reading that before it came out or when they were talking about oh, yeah. um, kind of the game's production after the fact. Uh, but, like, most of the things on, like, uh, Marcus's model, like you're seeing in here, like, the, the self-shadowing is something really unique to Unreal Engine 3 during this time when they were kind of didn't use a lot of real-time lighting, but instead, obviously, baked, as I mentioned earlier. And so the character shadows kind of show up in those moments when you are out of a uh, baked shadow. And when they do, they kind of, like, morph around. You can see it on the ground here. So, like, it, the shadow will technically move around even though it's not in shadow. Let me try and do it right here. Yeah, you can see it, like, right there. The shadow oh, yeah, moves. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's right. It's it's a uh, it's a little awkward looking, and I remember even at the time thinking like when I wasn't really knowing how it was working because you know real time shadows from shadow maps were pretty rare in games. Um, it's just because like they didn't really have any solution to like mix real time and um, baked lights, uh, and baked lighting yeah. like they would like they would do in Gears Three though. Gears Three does it in a much better way where you can barely tell that you're moving in and out of well again i mean this is this is still in the era before you know the rise of things like ambient occlusion where they were you know developers mm -hmm. were figuring out how to solve things like contact shadows and more you know ambient lighting so i mean this was like one step up from say the doom 3 era yeah it is everything was very starkly lit but <laughs> i think you know their color choices really worked well with this 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 aesthetic and i think one of the reasons a lot of games from this generation went for this sort of grayish brown kind of washed out look is that early on when they started introducing normal maps into everything uh you know if you had bright colors and like harsh lighting it ended up just looking kind of bad yeah it, it, uh you know what i mean yeah. like before the materials themselves were more natural and realistic like just applying normal maps added detail but uh you know when you started to combine everything together it, it that's where that that look that people kind of describe as plasticky 
or wet sort of originates from. So it, this feels like a transition period, but it was it was really quite striking for the time. Speaking of scripted destruction, I'm pretty sure when the emergence hole uh, opens up here, you should be able to see that falling into it or something like that. Yep. Yeah. Pretty good, yeah. actually. <laughs> uh, they did a nice job with the production and yeah. the animation work. Actually, I really like the. Uh, there's no muzzle flash shadows, but the muzzle flashes, like the, mm -hmm. the the orange glow that they gave those dynamic lights. It looks really nice. You know, it's it's funny. There's a trailer for this game that came out before uh, it was released, where it showed off for the first time. I think of like Marcus chainsawing an enemy. Yeah. Um, and that in that trailer. They actually had muzzle flash shadows. I know. I mean, I, I think that, that just goes along with what, <laughs> what they were trying to do with Unreal Engine early on. Yeah. And also... Right. And then, like, the the reality of, like, this has to run on a console. Yeah, uh, especially at yeah, the time. Let, but, you know... Yeah, right? Like... The early so, versions so. of this game did not... Uh, when they first showed it at trade shows, it ran pretty poorly. But, I mean, let's let's be honest here. It's it's not like it's not like today where the 360 was some, like, super low-powered box compared to the masterful mm, PC. Nope. The PC yeah. was really not that far ahead. Like, yes, it was. Like, this this is right when you were starting to see PC hardware really push beyond what the 360 could do. Yeah, like, at the time of release, like, the Xbox 360's GPU was so much more advanced than those that you could find on PC. Maybe they had similar amount of, like, Mm, like raw performance i think if you were to like do it at the time but the advanced feature set of the xbox 360's gpu just made it so much better for these next gen games uh on average i think that's you know? the last time that we have ever seen that yeah it honestly, really is because like ps3 obviously launched uh around the time of the 8800 series coming yeah, into existence yep. this one wow that that motion blur looked really good there for some reason when he was moving forward but when i was actually wait a minute what's going on like when I move the screen forward, uh, like the velocity of characters moving next to me makes it almost look like they have per object blur. Yeah, I mean that was that they were they were doing some sort of like, like motion blur like, back then, like a real simple. But yeah, it's not really. I've, I've, yeah, object blur. <laughs> I, I've talked about it before on the channel, but like. I remember Gears was one of the first time I liked the motion blur in it, but like when you were panning the camera while uh, shooting, uh, it could be like distracting on on a, on a 360 pad. Uh, here, it's, it's okay. I mean, I'm not feeling super distracted by it. Okay. Still, I mean, this was uh, this was a 2006 game, and then 2007 on PC. I still think, aside from Crisis, which was really good, I think Lost Planet was the king of uh, per object motion blur. Per object blur. Oh, it's so it good. I mean, that's another looking. one that will. Th it's another game that I. Th that I think we should look at because it's like one of the first DX10 games oh, on yeah. PC. Uh, wow, these cutscenes are pretty rough on the GPU. I'm seeing frame drops here, uh, 30 FPS because it's dropping. For, interestingly, the gameplay is not V-synced with the V-sync option on, yet the cutscenes are. That is interesting. I, I'm not sure what's going on. I mean, here. it's entirely uh, possible they decided that you know for storytelling reasons they would just lock V-sync on during cutscenes, yeah. which is unusual for a PC game to, to force that on users, but that's my best guess. Yeah, and, but I'm also like really curious why it's off in gameplay then too, because what if you just wanted no tearing in gameplay? Like right now it's tearing again. Yeah, that is, that uh, is very so, weird. That's weird, but also look at that, look at that texture. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Thank you, Marcus. Yeah, uh, that's so good. Uh, I need ammo. I think there's some on the other side of this. Uh, this is the first time you see, uh, was it Boomer? No, it's one of those Troika guns. Okay, okay. Called. Uh, yeah, I was going to say boom. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is where they teach you how to flank. Marcus, flank that something the something. The flanking was really fun in this game, though. Like, because of the, the, the stop and pop nature. Oh, I, I love Gears' gameplay. Uh, it's it's general, like, at the time, uh, you know, I had played Kill Switch Engage, actually. I mean, that's, uh, that's a band. You're thinking... Yeah. Oh, what, what, what is it called? Kill, kill dot switch. <laughs> Just, kill switch. Uh, but, uh, you know, like, this is third-person shooting done in a, you know, in a very polished way. Like, just moving in between cover like this. I mean, it hadn't really been uh, done before like this. No, no. It's this is uh, very, very new. Nope. And the ability to kind of do this, too. And then, of course, blind firing, which... I just loved at the time. Yep. I always love it when games have blind fire. But this is kind of funny. This is this pre-ambient occlusion. No, uh, I know. It's what do we do in shadows kind of thing? And like you, you would take it for granted nowadays. But this was all. This is how much games looked if they were out of, you know, 
out of the sunlight. This is what it usually looks like. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the thing when talking about this is, you know, people say, well, games look fine in, you know, X situation or Y situation. But a lot of that's just really smart artistry. Yep. And coming up with solutions to, like, make it like that car there. It doesn't look that bad or out of place, yeah, does no, it, it right? right? But that's that was carefully arted up to look okay within that scene. And, uh, but if yeah. you look behind the curtain like you were just doing at those pipes, it looks terrible because it's not. Yeah. It wasn't as carefully placed or adjusted. Yeah, and this is you know at the time all this lighting is baked, so an artist will have to put this car in. And if you actually look at the Unreal Engine three editor that was used in this game, they have almost no concept of what the lighting will look like on it also, until they bake it out. It is fun to think back. So. I mean, this is 2006 this game came out, and this was like three years after Unreal Tournament 2003 or so, I guess. Uh, uh, you mean UT2K4? No, no, no. U or U two, U two, UT2K3. That's what remember, you mean. Oh, sorry, there's both, mean. remember. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But specifically, that, that, that was the game where Epic introduced sort of static mesh map design. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. this was only three years out from this. Was, like, the idea of using static meshes to create your levels in this way was still relatively new at the time. Mm -hmm. And by that, you know, for those listening that aren't familiar, or don't recall, that's essentially in the past games like Quake were built using BSP brushes, which is like essentially like dynamically resizable, like sort of geometry chunks that you could create and build in the editor mm -hmm. where these, these static meshes are created in an external program. They're modeled and textured and everything. You essentially import them into the Unreal editor and then you can place them as you please to sort of build the world, you sort of map out the world and you sort of build piece, it's almost like piecing together a puzzle in a way where you take all these objects and you put it together to make it look sweet, which is something that, by the way, I said in the Turok video, Turok actually uses st <laughs> all static meshes, but there's not yeah, a lot of which, them, so. <laughs> yeah, but this, that's crazy to think about because like, I remember uh, making my own maps in Gold Source and like having to draw the lines in. Yeah, that's and what you did. You, how painful it was. Oh, um, so, this, so obviously, tedious. Yeah, like uh, obviously, there's the, the advantage of this is the actually the the detail you can achieve uh, usually is much much and higher the, than you. I guess the point I'm getting to is that um, you know this was the next generation of consoles and you know new PC stuff, so they were actually able to really push what you could do with geometry counts on individual meshes to a new level. Yeah, and so you combine that with so you have these much higher polygon sort of like static meshes that they use to build the world. Like, look how smooth that that barrier is that you're leaning on right now. Yeah, it's little. Look at how the, how circular it's this very is. That's circular. actually super it's impressive. Really, really <laughs> nice looking, right? It's a. I wonder if that wall, if it's a bunch of meshes, or if that if this huge fountain thing is a, a single model. I would I would I would imagine it's just one single. That's model. what I'm thinking. Maybe like with this in the middle being a little different, but you know, I'm just I'm just thinking it's about good, it now. Right? Like the it looks great. Yeah, like it looks so good. Um, <laughs> this game also, I, I, if I recall, they changed or they started end up using a, an industry practice that that became commonplace, where a lot of the models and details were made in Mudbox, which is a like a program where you kind of sculpt a voxel like shape for all this detail and then it was baked down into normal maps that would apply the, to the character like they had a great preview image of like um the amount of detail that was added into their character models via normal mapping uh, out of the mud box bake and it was like huge difference it like at the time i remember thinking like how are these character models so detailed and i'm coming off of playing by the way like half-life 2 uh, yeah. Where you know, like the, the amount of texture detail in models there wasn't like the biggest thing that made them look good, you know. But in this game, the texture detail is very high for the time period, they, um, and they had to rely on it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Another emergence hole. Yeah, I mean, I, I liked those ideas, especially at the time of like bringing in all that extra detail. Oh, I always love this—the uh, the parabola. Ooh. Like here's an area where the skyline, uh, if I had MSAA on, it would be very ineffective. I did like that uh, that light that was spawned with the grenade. It's the same as the muzzle flashes, but it's 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 a larger area of effect, and it looks really good. Cause it's just a quick boom like that. Like that looks great. Well, that does look. Good. <laughs> let's uh, let's do the, the thing that I gotta do. What is it? R on a PC? No. What is it? F. Let's see. Yes. Yeah, let's, let's do this. <laughs> That's what everyone's waiting for, and it and it takes the frame rate too. How appropriate! <laughs> it does look awesome. Uh, as someone who's played a lot of Warhammer in their life, uh, I've always wanted a chainsaw band. Hey, remember uh, Space Marine? That was a dude. That was a fun uh, game. 
that's a fun game. I mean, that's uh, obviously later than this. I yeah, want to yeah. say that came out in 2010. It was uh, years later remember. for sure. It was yeah, years later. Inspired um, by this, but it, yeah, it was a lot of fun. Very different gameplay though. Yeah, yeah, uh, it has a lot of the because you don't take stuff. cover in that game. And yeah. That's right. I mean, the space ring doesn't need cover. Let's be honest. <laughs> let's be completely honest. Does Marcus need cover in this giant armor? Apparently, uh, he but does. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I think, you know, just what, we, what we're seeing here, also that the bloody gear in the middle <laughs> to indicate Oh yeah, damage the omen of death or whatever it's and they, called. And they have uh, the damage indicators for directional uh, damage as well, which was kind of a thing that Half-Life, I think, was one of the first games to really make that Yeah, popular. you're right, it is actually, yeah. And, but here, everything's centered around that little gear in the middle, which is not a bad way to go, because it doesn't... I, I, I can't recall if you take a lot of damage. Does the whole screen go red or something, or is it just that? I think it maybe middle? desaturates a tiny bit. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, this game is actually very uh, HUD-less. I mean, obviously, I have the overlay here from uh, River Tuner Statistics Server, but the only time your HUD is brought up is when you actually change items. Yeah, I, uh, usually. I really appreciate that. The HUD design, the the lack of HUD actually is really immersive. Oh yeah, and you have to pick up. That's right. <laughs> yeah, literally pick up ammo boxes. That's right. <laughs> Which is very much so like Crisis. I always think of that. Like most games, obviously, when you would just run over an ammo box, and you know that applies to Half Life Two. It applies to so many games from this era. Ah, yes, these things. Uh, this is. I think the design oh, around yeah. this was because you are um, going to be playing this game also in co-op. Yep. Maybe. I think that's exactly so, right. So the other person w during this sequence would take over Dom. Uh, or would play as Dom, and so you would see each other, which was kind of cool uh, if you were playing either in System Link or uh, in uh, the same Xbox, which I would imagine co-op play on one Xbox is probably uh, not the best frame rate. Was that even game. possible it, yet? Was it? Was it? I or I am I thinking of the later games? The later I games say, had split screen, but I don't think... Because uh, I remember that uh, I can't in, remember, the, though. in Gears 2 at least. But uh, I do know that I'm pretty game. certain that Gears 1 had actual System Link support. Uh, where I think it was Gears 2 they started where even just to do the co-op campaign I think you had to connect to Xbox Live and use the internet which was a huge uh, step down for me yeah you know what? while I'm sitting here and seeing this Troika shoot at me let's dip in uh, actually it just saved a checkpoint I'm pretty sure right yeah I think so yeah I'm gonna actually um, exit to main menu and change some of the settings up just to see how the GPU actually fares at that like for example like more or less, the, the higher settings in this game were very similar to those found on the Xbox 360. That's but right. Like, you know, let's just play it like at 1280 by 720. And th unfortunately, the, the amount of anti-lacing you can uh, turn on and off is limited to just 4x. But I'm going to really quickly dip into the INI &I file and then turn that on and just see how the game runs with an unlocked frame rate at the same settings as an Xbox 360, more or less. All right. So yeah, here like here in the Gears I and I file, you can see I'm going to change. I'm pretty sure max multi samples from one to two will make it pretty much exactly like the Xbox 360 version, and we shall go back into game. All right, let's give it a shot. Oh wait, I gotta find that other variable for smooth frame rate. It's called something like smooth, uh, some smooth frame rate. Yeah, let me just go to the PC gaming wiki. Good old PC gaming wiki. I love I love the PC gaming wiki. It's uh it's very useful. There it is. Smooth frame rate. What? Let's crank this up to two four. Two four two. Two four two. <laughs> two four two. Why not? Uh. Why not? And then I guess we'll leave the minimum smooth what frame. Is, I what can turn it off entirely. I, that, I feel like that smooth frame variable has existed since the old days of Unreal. Oh, it's totally in Unreal Engine 4, by the way. Uh, let's, let's do that to false. The thing just, it's always here. Yeah. Sure. Is it? Oh, wait, it's not going to let me save it. Oh, wait, it's it's you have to save it elsewhere. Well, you have Thank to. You, you have to make it. Um, you have to disable uh, read only. It's set to the read only flag is clicked. Oh, is it really? I bet. Right. Yeah, right. Right. Click on the INI file in the folder. Check the properties. 
No. No, that's weird. Weird. Um, Why would I it... think it's just because it's in program files under Windows 10. Oh. Yeah, because I don't own my own. Oh, stuff. yeah. Okay, you opened it. Yep. Now let's see what happens. Uh, let's load up the game. Here we go. Back to gears. <laughs> Back into gears. Runtime error. Okay, good. No. That's what we love. No, it's just this is the, silly. This is the best part. <laughs> love it. Love 80 by 7. It's funny. Hmm. Hmm. That runtime error. Uh, is it actually loading the game now? I'm not certain. Thank you, Windows. No, it's not loading. Again. No, it's Piece it has crap. crashed. That runtime error was in fact a real runtime error. Uh oh. Oh, son of what a! Does it just... say? What does it say? I can't even read it. It's too blurry. The application is to terminate in an unusual way. Uh oh. So it didn't, maybe it's it didn't because like I changed. I change. Okay. Well, <sighs> which is unusual. Let's redo that again. False, two four two. Let's just leave it at at the same as it was sixty two, and just leave smooth smoothing. It doesn't make sense though. This is crap. Oh, oh there we go. Yes, I've just spent a lot of time fiddling with a DOS PC recently, and that. That level of troubleshooting is so different than this. <laughs> yes. The thing about that this is, is that uh, there isn't really a lot of... The only resource for it is the wonderful Vogons, or however you say it. Wow. Okay, so you just you just crashed it. Uh, You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to restart this PC. No, 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 no. Hold on. First things first. Just try um, renaming that INI file to like Wargame 1 or something. Right, and then to see if it generates a new one, or if it actually, if it uses a default file and it didn't like you messing with it. But I don't know if it's going to generate a new one. No, it's still crashing. Well, what should we do? Uh, let me literally just restart, and if it doesn't work, then I'll just say... Then I'll just be like, well, that happened. Welcome to PC Games. Because I didn't change it. I literally didn't change anything. This is great, though. This this is this is going to be a fun <laughs> part of the video, actually. <laughs> I'm just going to restart. Oh, God. No, Jesus Christ. Oh, for real? Well, I guess in spite of all of my my wanting it to work to show off the game's performance, uh, this is what happens when a game is kind of put into like a newer form of Windows and, you know, it doesn't hold up over time. Uh, probably under Windows Vista, which I'm now going to be using to play a game like Gears of War in the future, this wouldn't be happening, I'd hope. Uh, so that's how it ends. This is the end. Uh, not with a bang, but with a with a whimper, I guess. Uh, it's, it's like Emergence Day in reverse. We're just going back. Submergent just going back day. in the ground. <laughs> Submergence Day. Uh, but John, thank you for joining me on this wily, zany adventure of playing Gears of War on a era you know, typical PC. It was but good fun course, talking of about course. Unreal Engine 3 with you. And uh, I hope you, in spite of this kind of tepid ending, enjoyed this video for what it is. And if you did enjoy it, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. If you're already a subscriber, please consider hitting that little bell in the corner to be informed as soon as Digital Foundry posts a video. If you want to talk to John or myself about Gears of War, Windows Vista, and how Windows 10 apparently can't run Gears of War that well, Write a comment below or follow John and myself on Twitter. And as always, this is John and Alex wishing you farewell, auf Wiedersehen und farewell and Wolfenstein. <laughs>